The Porsche Taycan is a great car, if you can get over the fact it's an EV, and many people can't. But if you feel you can, there's some things you should consider before buying one. Let's go over to a man who's driving one to find out what they are. Hello, yes, I am that man in a Taycan. Taycan, Taycan, I've never really worked out how you say it. Let's just say Taycan, who is going to tell you about all the things you need to think about and some food for thought if you're looking at getting on board with one of these cars in the near future. I've had this car now for about a year and my ownership experience has been very good and I do follow some of the clubs and forums online to see what's going on because I like to kind of hear what other people's experiences are of this car. Are they positive? Are they negative? Have they had a good time? Have they had a bad time? On the whole, sentiment seems to be pretty good with this car. So I've got some topics that I want to discuss though that you should consider as well if you're looking at getting one of these cars because I've done all the sad research so hopefully you don't have to and you know some highlights really of things to consider with one of these cars. Now the first bit of advice if you're looking at buying a Taycan is don't buy one. Yes, do not buy one. Well, at least not new anyway. And also if you are a private buyer, not a business buyer, I know there's incentives that you get, covered that in another video on the channel. Plenty of incentives you get if you buy a new one of these three businesses in the UK. But if you're a private buyer, my advice right now would simply be not to buy one new. And there's a number of factors as to why you shouldn't. The first of which is the lead times right now. They kind of change on a whim. You're going to be waiting a considerably long time for one anyway. I don't want to go into or quote any specific times right now because it seems to change on a daily basis. But you are going to be waiting some time. And I, I see stories, you know, cars that were due to be delivered now getting delayed by a month or two because a part is still missing or there's a backlog or they're having trouble just transporting them around. So new you're going to struggle a bit and you're going to wait a little bit. Also, finance deals right now, APR, percentage, interest rates in the UK have blown up right now. So you're just not going to be getting a good deal and you're going to be paying through the nose and I know uh, unfortunately a few people who have a new car on order simply withdrawing because you know it's taken some time and interest rates and mortgages etc have gone up considerably and they've just thought you know what this is a bit scary I'm not quite sure I want to do this right now and this is real this is happening yeah you could say first world problems right the other thing as well is right this is really important the used car stock available right now for Taycans it's bonkers when I last checked Auto Trader there were 600 cars available there's still 450 cars available 450 of these things out there ready for you to drive away in today That is a lot of choice and you're probably going to find the spec that you want out there somewhere. You might have to do a bit of homework, but just think 450 Taycans in a field. It's going to be quite a big field, quite a lot of choice. So don't discount used. Obviously make sure you get the right warranty, etc. It comes with a balance of warranty. You're going to want that. These cars do have their challenges sometimes, heaters for example, but do not, if you're a private buyer, be put off by buying used because you're probably going to find something today. The next thing as well is if you're buying new, the depreciation. These cars do not hold their value. They kind of have dropped like a stone. So if you buy new, you're going to take a considerable hit on the value of your car and again, that rates that you get and the GFE probably just are not going to be very favorable. The next thing as well is you might want to just hold off buying a Taycan for a while because there is a lot of competition out there. It's heating up on a daily basis. A lot of manufacturers coming forward with their offerings and even Porsche, you know, we've got the, the, the Cayman EV platform coming out soon. You've probably seen the Mission X teased as well, but there is a lot of very exciting cars. Uh, just around the corner 
Taycan's been out for a little while now, right? We're due a facelift soon, that GT model coming. But that is just something you might want to consider. Just maybe hold back a little bit and see kind of what happens over the next year or so. Depends how desperate you are to get in one of these. So, you know, playing a bit of a patient game there, a patience game, isn't going to be a isn't going to be a bad thing to do right now. I'm pretty sure of it. The next thing to consider, and this is a bit of a weird one, is people do not hear you coming in this car. The amount of times pedestrians have stepped out in front of me because they simply haven't heard it. It's an EV, even with the sound on it, it's still quiet. It's not something you necessarily listen out for as a pedestrian when you're out and about on your daily business. It, it's just a, a bit of a bizarre sound. So the, the human ear, I don't think, is tuned in to listening for these. We've been listening to engines all our life, but not the sound of an EV. So that's something I think that will change the generation. So you do have to take a little bit of extra caution when you're out and about amidst pedestrians. The next thing, and this is an important one, is the UK Infra. It's rubbish. The UK charging Infra is absolutely diabolical. Government, if you're listening, what are you doing? Get on board and fix it. It's really embarrassing. I was just following a story of a guy who took his Taycan through Europe recently and down through France it was a different story. There were so many EV chargers on the route. They were practically following him and competing for business. It a completely different story. You go to Nina Clerk and there's Ionity chargers everywhere there. Ionity chargers here, I have to say, are fantastic, but there just isn't enough of them. We need one of those in every postcode in order for this to work properly. It's just a sad state of affairs that we've got in the UK. The infrastructure is at, we're so bad at infrastructure in the UK. The roads are crumbling. I can't even call them roads, if I'm honest. We need more infrastructure, we need more charging capability, sort it out. I mean, what is the excuse? They probably say, oh, the rollout's going very well. It's not. It's rubbish. Fix it, please. Obviously, it's nice to be able to charge at home and wake up with a full tank, but yeah, it's just not ideal, really not ideal. Next up is the range. Do not get fixated on the range of the Taycan. I mean, you, I did say in a previous video, you kind of always got it in the back of your head, right? The range of the Taycan. And you see people on the, on the club charging them to 100% to get as much range as possible. And now we're in warmer weather. You know, that range might be up 250. I've seen above 300 miles. Admittedly, that car was probably being driven around on the back of a trailer, in all honesty. But yeah, you just kind of do not get hung up on how much range you've got. Just kind of enjoy it and charge it when you need to charge it. The advice is to keep it between about sort of 25% and 85% in that Goldilocks bracket. But just do not get hung up because some people make this an obsession, an unhealthy obsession. And they're going to end up in a support group surrounded by people who've lost everything because all they could think about was... EV charging and how much range they've got. So that is just something that you need to not think about as well when you're getting a Taycan is just enjoy the car. It's a great car, great drive, you'll have a thoroughly good time if you don't let the range become an addiction, a weird addiction. Next up is the tyres. This car will eat tyres. This car will eat tyres. It gets through tyres very quickly because it's so heavy and unfortunately I recently discovered a bulge in my near side front tyre and I jokingly posted on the club that I should sand it back down and lo and behold a few people interacting with that comment of course tongue in cheek but posting pictures of their bulges as well sounds so wrong doesn't it but posting pictures of their tyre bulges too because it's happened to them low profile tyres really heavy car and the roads in the UK look like this they're just an absolute state so you hit a pothole and that's it you are your tire just bulges out they're because these cars are so heavy that's it game over and then you're looking at a new set of tires and a set of tires front tires on this car 
right now is going to cost you about 600 notes which is absolute insanity and if you're watching this because inflation is so high watching this now it's probably going to be about 18 and a half million pounds just for a front set of tires give or take a few quid right but the next and last piece of advice if you're considering a tie calm and I'm sure you've done your research on your home charger etc but do not whatever you do get one used or new with those carbon fiber blade alloys the fancy fan blade alloys do not get them every post I've seen every owner who's had these pretty much in the UK is suffering from corrosion with them and they're the most expensive alloys you can get on the Taycan I believe um, they kind of look quite cool I'm not a mad fan of them but you get between the carbon fiber and the uh, the metal part of the wheel you get watery ingress or salt creeping into that and they corrode uh, pretty much everyone seems to be suffering with this and unfortunately Porsche are pretty indifferent when it comes to honoring repairs of these citing it to be uh, a wear and tear non warrantable item so my advice would be just steer clear of those alloys whatever you do I think the mission E's still look good I know they've been around for a while but I just think they suit the car brilliantly and you can't go far wrong with them but it's such a fun car just instant acceleration so much fun I absolutely love it really good drive and if you do get one I think you'll enjoy it I'm sure it'll hold out to be a great car for you and yeah that's it just wanted to share some thoughts there about Taycan ownership because for me it's been good and I'm sure for you it would be good too just really consider what you're buying though if you're a private buyer don't discount used cars just because they're used I wouldn't know either so that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Do take care. Stay well. See you on the next one. And bye for now.